Hello and welcome to the course Marine Engineering. I am Professor Abdul Samad. I am teaching in the Ocean Engineering Department, Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. Last few years I am teaching this course. So, I thought I will be recording so that my IIT students as well as other college students also will get benefit from this course. Who are the audience of this course? The course is tailored to provide comprehensive knowledge to the students pursuing marine engineering, naval architecture, ocean engineering or other relevant courses. Whether you are interested in designing ship, offshore platforms or marine structures, this course would be equipped with basic knowledge of mechanical systems used. Engineers focusing on ship, offshore machinery, operations will find relevant knowledge in this course. Practicing engineers can enhance their basic knowledge and understanding through this course. Additionally, this course content will cover uh, has covered the syllabus of GATE examination, national examination in India. So, if you are uh, complete this course, it will be helpful for your competitive exams. Not only get, maybe other competitive exams you can uh, appear after completing this course. What is the content of this course? So, in this course, I have taught basic part, not very advanced part, basic part of thermodynamics, heat transfer, heat exchanger, pumps, compressor, boiler, ice engine, gas turbine, waste disposal, many topics. For example, basic thermodynamics. When you are going to study about, let us say, ice engine or gas turbine or HV systems or other part, so, you must know the basic thermodynamics. There are different thermodynamic laws. What are the criteria uh, for studying? I mean, if you if you study thermodynamic laws, how can you apply into your marine machinery system? How to calculate power? How to calculate pressure, temperature? For different, uh, so, those things you will be learning from the basic thermodynamics part. Then heat transfer part is there. Heat exchanger will be integrated part of your offshore machinery systems, uh, let us say platform or offshore ships. So, that also I discussed, heat exchanger I discussed. Then whenever you are talking about ship, pump will be inevitable part of your ship because pump will be giving power to for cleaning, for HV system, for your boiler system. So I discuss pump, compressors, sometime you need compressed air or compressor will be used for your HVAC system, heating, ventilation, air conditioning system. Uh, turbo machinery, for example, propeller is a turbo machine. So I discuss uh, in the course, then boiler is there, boiler will be producing high pressure, high temperature steam, superheated steam. So, that steam will be running a turbine or maybe steam reciprocating engine. So, what are the different types of boiler? How steam is getting generated? How much efficiency of boiler is there? What are the different types of steam uh, engine or power producing system? And how it trans uh, transmitting losses? Those I discussed, there will be separate calculation, manual calculation. You can do some example calculations also will be there. So, you can practice. Ice engine, internal combustion engine, internal combustion engine you, you are very much familiar actually. For example, you have seen car, bus, truck, even aircraft also. You need power source. So, ice engine is used for your mainly surface moving vehicles, for example, car, bus, truck, and aircraft normally it will be gas turbine based system. So, all those machinery will be used for shipping applications or offshore platform application. In many cases, gas turbine, for example, INS class Indian ship. So, there you people use gas turbine. In many cases, nuclear turbine also, nuclear power plant also will be used, small uh, power source system will be there, for example, submarine system. So, that also discussed. And then you produce power in ice engine or gas turbine engine or steam power plant, then the same power will be transferred to your propeller, it will be transferred to your generator system so that you can get electricity. So, then you need power transmission. So how to transmit power from engine to propeller? So, you must have a shaft, there must be gear bearing, then lubrication must be there, then there will be one stern tube, stern tube will be connecting uh, your propeller and shaft in uh, stern tube uh, will be, the tail shaft will be passing through stern tube, what, how to lubricate that one? Uh, what will be the bearing in the stern tube? What is the thrust bearing? So, I will discuss in that. Then another thing is the wheel rudder also I will discuss, fuel lubrication, you need to understand what is fuel, what is lubrication, how to what are the different types of fuel and different types of lubrication also you understand. Waste disposal. So, when a ship is moving, so lots of waste will be coming. So, from food stuff, from engine room. So, you cannot dispose that waste in water directly because marpol is there, they will catch you immediately. So, how to confirm that marpol will not catch you because you handle the waste properly. Sometimes you have to burn, sometimes you have to separate, uh, sometimes you have to make compact. So, what are the different ways to reduce waste and to make everything safe and sustainable? Bilge water will be there. So, bilge water means engine will be producing uh, lots of waste. Your other sources also lots of oily water will be there. 
oil mixed with oil, maybe mineral oil or cooking oil. So, how to separate that one? Because if you are not separating, you know, disposing water, so ocean will be polluted. So, you do not want to pollute ocean, so you have to separate. What are the different technology available for separating oil? How to monitor oil, how much oil, uh, monitor that water, bilge water, that storage will be there inside uh, ship where all waste water will be deposited. So, how to monitor how much oil is there? So, what are the different types of monitor? Now, you monitor, now you separate, then you maintain the regulation body's regulation. Then HVC system, temperature of Chennai is very high, Chem temperature in Alaska very low or Russia very low. Then one ship is moving from one place to another place, so you must maintain the temperature, otherwise it will not be comfortable. For example, if you are going to Scotland, say Aberdeen port, so winter season it will be very much cold, you cannot survive there. So you must have a heating arrangement, but if you are coming to Chennai, same ship is coming to Chennai, Chennai port, so in that case you have to reduce temperature, you have to reduce moisture. So then what are the different mechanism to do that? So I will discuss in that course. Refrigeration system, so sometime you carry medicine, sometime you carry some frozen item, say meat stuff or uh, like say um, poultry stuff you are transporting from one country to another. So you have to refrigerate. So what are the different mechan machinery available for refrigerating or reducing cold temperatures for that food stuff or maybe passenger needs their food stuff for daily con consumption. So how to carry it? You have to, you must have free refrigerator system or fridge, you commonly say. So, uh, we will discuss mechanism of fridge. Uh, I have discussed already. Uh, then, desalination system, seawater ppm or the salt content in seawater 35,000 ppm parts per million. Now, that water you cannot drink. Our drinking water ppm will be like within 500 about. Now, how to reduce that salt content? So, what are the different mechanisms available? Because uh, you cannot use randomly any mechanism because you have to see energy consumption, you have to see efficiency of the system. So, what are the different mechanisms available? How to calculate uh, those salt content or power consumption? What are the different refrigeration cycle available? That also I have discussed in the course. Then, lastly, is coming fire safety and some electrical basics. So, fire safety like if there is any fire, then how to identify fire and how to handle the fire? If you are not handling properly, that can be disaster. You may have seen this uh, oil, lots of oil disaster happened in offshore area, fire happened also. Then how to stop that fire and what are the different machinery available, how the mechanical system will be working if fire is there. So that also I have discussed in the course. So the course will be covering the machinery system operating uh, on a ship or on platform, but this course will not cover the structural aspect or high level of CFD computational fluid dynamic analysis or finite element modeling that I did not include because if I want to include that will be a big course so that will not be undergrad level that may be masters level. So I excluded intentionally that part. I have given all the basic part basic calculations so that the student will have complete understanding of the whole machinery system available uh, used for your shipping or offshore applications. Now you want to learn the course, you want to get one certification, how to do it? So, NPTEL portal will be there, so just you go and register, there will be every, uh, most probably every year it will be floated, so that time you register, then there will be some assignment every week, then there will be final exam, if you complete assignment and exam, then you can get certification, that certificate can be valid for your uh, maybe undergrad course or for company can consider that you have done the basic marine engineering course. I hope this course will be beneficial for your career uh, and for your learning goal. Thank you for entering into the course of marine engineering. Thank you very much.